Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. sheet music that kind of explains a little bit about what the song is about, so I'm going to read it. In much of classic Western hymnody, doubt is always cast in a negative light. Yet, as Barbara Brown Taylor notes, quote, doubt often brings me to poke at what I believe, and when it topples, I realize it was an idol. And so doubt has been a divine gift that has led me deeper into God. End quote. So this song thus asks for doubt when we have created idols out of our certainties.
Thank you for that choral prelude, um, David, and our leads. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone, to Northley United Church. I'm Reverend Leanne Alstrom, and uh, I'll presiding, be presiding for the first half of the service. We have a guest preacher today, Reverend uh, Dr. Nancy Hardy is with us. Welcome, Nancy. And there is a bio that is written up in your bulletins. I encourage you to read a little bit more about Nancy there. Um, there are a couple things coming up I'll just highlight for you. Again, they're in your bulletins or your news bites. And that is next Sunday, um, there will be a guest from um, what was the uh, Massey Center many years ago. It has been renamed as the Abiona Center, and uh, you'll learn more about what's happening with them. And then uh, that's right after the service. I think you have to register for the lunch. So if you would like to join, please let Tricia in the office know. And at 5 o'clock next Sunday, there will be a love jazz service with Paul Callender. And I've already got a sneak peek at the music that he's going to be doing, and I'm really excited about it. So I encourage you to come and bring a friend with you next Sunday. Uh, next, um, who's our guest preacher next Sunday? Oh yes, Reverend Amber is coming back next Sunday. So we'll be, uh, we'll be um, able to listen to Amber's message next Sunday. Of course, on uh, Tuesday the 16th, there'll be Tessie at 7.30. Again, that's one of those things we encourage you to bring a friend with you and join uh, with that. I think those, that's all the announcements I have. Is there anything else that anybody want to share this morning? All right. I, I didn't offer a welcome to those who are uh, worshiping online. I. I welcome you as well. And um, before I forget, because somebody's going to say, you forgot birthdays, Bob. <laughs> Any birthdays for April? Anybody birthdays for April? No birthdays in April here. Wow. Ah. Well, anybody at home, if you're having a birthday in April, just extending warm birthday wishes. I invite you now to join with me for our call to worship. Though darkness seems to envelop us, Jesus breaks through with the word of peace. Fears are banished. Hope is more than restored. Rejoice, the Lord is with us. We rejoice in the peace for the blessings of grace. We invite you now to join with us in singing Christ is Alive, Voices United 158.
This morning, for the lighting of the Christ candle, I want to invite you to just reflect for a moment on the light coming through the room, coming into the room, through the windows. The light that colors the, the pews through the light, through the stained glass windows. And be mindful of where that light comes from, coming from the sun. Often through the rush of our days, we don't stop and just engage with the natural environment around us. And light is a hopeful thing. Light is a hopeful thing when you're in the darkness. And I, 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 this was brought to mind to me this morning as I lay thinking about what I wanted to light the Christ candle about. I thought about the eclipse that's coming tomorrow. And the way in which the moon will obstruct the light. It's a phenomenal thing for us, isn't it? To imagine that. It's rare. But what it made me, reminded me of is the times in when the Son of God is eclipsed in our lives. By other distractions that come about. Worries and frets. We occupy ourselves with things that really don't matter that much sometimes. We get ourselves all worked up in a stew and fret. And it obscures the light of hope that's always present with us. The good news is that even when the light is eclipsed, even when the Son of God, the hope of God is eclipsed, the light is always there. It never goes away. So. Today, I light the Christ candle with gratitude for the sun, S-U-N, and the sun, S-O-N. May the Spirit of Christ be with you all. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. And now, as is customary, I invite you to take a moment and be the light for your neighbor. Greet them with the peace of Christ. Please join me for our opening prayer, which is printed in your bulletins. Holy One, we find ourselves in the locked doors of ourselves, just as the disciples were behind closed doors. We too are afraid, perhaps for a different reason than theirs, but we too need the breath of the Holy Spirit to take away our fears so that we can come out from behind these locked doors. We are like Thomas with our questions and our doubts. We sometimes need to see in order to believe, and we need you in order to have faith. We too need the peace you bring, because our world is fraught with violence and unrest. We thank you for the blessing you have given us, the love that transcends all our doubts and makes us whole. Holy One, may the doors of our church be open to all as we gather in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join us for our next hymn, The Day of Resurrection, from Voices United 164, the Red Hymn Book.
Holy Spirit, stir us with your word as we listen for inspiration in your sacred story. Amen. Scripture this morning is John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and God. And then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. In this reading, we hear God's voice. The Spirit is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. I've already met somebody who comes from my hometown, Sudbury. And I was delighted when Donna Rutz uh, got in touch with me and asked me to come. Um, I don't know if you're aware that you may be, but Donna keeps the whole region together. <laughs> and, and so it's, <clears throat> it's really nice to be on her home turf, so to speak. So let's pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts be with you. O oh Lord, our strength, and Redeemer. Amen. If you see me occasionally sip, I will not, this is not vodka, <laughs> but this is ginger tea. So. Last week we celebrated Easter, and was it a great time? Sunshine, blue sky, Leanne was back. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And then Monday came, and it seemed to be the same old, same old. And sure, the sun was still shining, and the sky was still blue, but if we read or heard the news, it seemed that nothing had changed in the world. There's still wars going on and suffering. At least that's how I felt, and maybe you did too. And then I remembered a story about a young boy and his journey through the darkness. Let's call him Josh. Josh was nine years old and really, really afraid of the dark. He lived on a farm, and one night his father told him to go to the barn and feed the horses. He turned pale and he started to tremble. So, Josh's father stepped out on the porch with him and lit a lantern, held it up, and then he said, How far can you see? Josh said, I can see halfway to the barn. His father gave him the lantern and said, Carry this halfway to the barn. When Joshua reached halfway, his father called out, how far can you see now? 
He held up the lantern and he shouted, I can see the barn and the barn door. His father called out, walk to the barn door. Joshua shouted when he re had reached the barn door and then his father called out, now open the door and tell me what you see. Josh opened the door and shouted back, I can see inside the barn. I can see the horses. Good, said his father. Now feed them. <laughs> the disciples on Easter evening were a bit like the boy who was afraid of the dark. Jesus was dead. Their light had gone out and it seemed to their depression and their tiredness that it would ever shine again. And they were afraid. John's Gospel says the doors of the house were locked because of fear. It's true that Mary had burst in with some amazing tale about angels and an empty tomb and a gardener who turned out to be Jesus, but they didn't believe that woman. They could not believe that Jesus was risen from the dead. And then, as was their custom, Peter would have taken bread and blessed it. And all of a sudden, Jesus was there. Jesus was there in the breaking of bread. Jesus was there with a the promise of peace. They could see him, they could feel him, they could hear him. It was as though they had taken the first step in a world of light. But that was just the first step on the way to the barn, because not all the disciples were there that first evening. Thomas was missing, the same suspicious, skeptical Thomas who wanted everything in black and white. And even though the disciples tried to tell him about seeing Jesus, he just wouldn't believe without proof. Unless I see the scars in his hands and put my hand in those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. And so they were stuck halfway to the barn. But a week later, Christ reappears again to the disciples. And this time, Jesus, Thomas is with them, and Jesus says, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas touches Jesus, feels his scars, and says, my Lord and my God. And in that moment, they all reached the barn door. There's something we tend to forget about Easter, that the risen Christ, the Christ who rose on Easter, still had the scars of Good Friday. And Thomas recognized Jesus Christ, not by his halo, but by his scars. Growing up in the Christian faith means listening to all the stories, not just the triumphant ones, it's a bit like going to the barn in the dark, one step at a time. For some of us, our journey starts when our mother and father take us to church. But somewhere along the line, we discover that the journey is ours to decide whether we'll reach the barn door or run back to the porch. And somewhere along the line, we realize that we're not alone in the journey, that even with all our fears and doubts, even with all our present troubles, God is with us. And Jesus, our risen Lord, is here to guide us along the way. Jesus, a risen Christ with human scars. Jesus didn't hover above the heartache of the world. He became part of our pain, touched our care and sorrows, lived where we lived, died as we must die. The disciples knew who Christ was because he had scars. Jesus knew we have scars too. And that sometimes the people with scars are the one who can help us most.
When my husband Bob died, people were very kind. There were phone calls and flowers and cards and letters. They were all beautiful, touching and comforting, and I still have many of them. But one of the cards I got stood out. It was from a longtime friend, a colleague in ministry. He expressed his, his sympathy and then he said, this experience will make you a better pastor. <laughs> now at the time, I was really offended. I thought his sentiments were really cynical. But you know, he was right. Because of my pain around Bob's death, I could better understand the suffering of the people in my congregation. Because of the experience in the hospital, I knew a little of what they went through. And I found that others recognized my scars and what they were. And they'd say, well, you know what I'm going through because you've been there. This past year has been another difficult one. The pandemic seems to linger on, prices keep going up, and the world thrashes its way through wars and climate change. But as people of faith, we know there can be hope and healing. We can be healed by Jesus because he, we know he will be with us in our suffering. He wept, he felt pain, and he suffered the agony of wondering if he had been deserted. And because he bears those scars, we know there is someone who is familiar with our tears, someone who knows our dirty little secrets and still loves us. Let me close uh, with some words from my favorite advice columnist, Amy Dickinson. I really like her because she's down to earth, she's got a good sense of humor, and her wisdom is undeniable. If you've never heard of her, look her up. So, she responds to this letter. <clears throat> Dear Amy, I think this is a tall order, but I am asking for your thoughts about how to process the experience of the past few years. I am overwhelmed by all of the sadness, division, dislocation, and loss. And I wonder if the pandemic has scarred me permanently. I'm curious about your perspective on this. Signed, Distrust. Dear Distressed, thank you for giving me the opportunity to try and tackle your very big question. In response, I'm offering up two of my favorite philosophers, Viktor Frankl and Dolly Parton. <laughs> Frankl, a psychiatrist, was imprisoned at Auschwitz where all of his captive family members and over a hundred million others were murdered. He survived. He wrote an important book about this experience called Man's Search for Meaning, and it offers indelible lessons about resilience. Boiled down, says Amy, Frankel's belief is that human beings can find meaning and the motivation to persevere through suffering by unlocking their sense of purpose and by developing a rich inner life. On to Dolly, who said, storms make trees take deeper roots. At some point, says Amy, we in North America seem to have absorbed the belief that life was supposed to be easy for us. It is not. Surely the pandemic experience connected us to other humans who have experienced war, hunger, trauma, and dislocation. This is tough, but it is not the worst. You can see your scars as evidence that you cannot heal, or you can emerge wounded, but determined to grow. I say, Lead with your scars. They are proof of your humanity. Thank you, Amy. I think the pandemic has left people feeling scarred, 
and has left a trail of anxiety and anger about the world in general. We watch pictures of the atrocities of the war in Ukraine, and we shudder at what's happening in the Middle East. We hear about incidents of racism and hit and run, and we wonder where it's all going. When Jesus appeared to Thomas, he said, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Physician tell, <coughs> tell them. <coughs> Physician, <coughs> physicians tell us that scars are a natural part of the healing process. And even though we live in difficult times, there can be healing for all of us. The good news is that Thomas the Doubter became Thomas the Believer, committed to spending the good news of the resurrection. And the good news is that we can do the same. Like Thomas and the boy who reached the barn, our doubts and our fear of the dark can disappear when we're surrounded by the Spirit of Christ. We are loved by a Christ who bears scars for our sake and the sake of the world. Sometimes there are wounds that refuse to heal. Sometimes we feel like failures, but our wounds may lead to another's healing. And on this Sunday that follows Easter, I pray that you may have the courage to reach out to others in your weakness and that you may all find new life. And may the risen Christ be with you on your journey. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Healing Christ, we are grateful for your presence on our journey and for the strength you give us on the way. May we be, continue to be blessed by the joy of your living spirit.
Let us pray together. Great and glorious God, you turn our mourning into gladness and call us from night into a shining dawn. We praise you for your great love and for the risen Christ who brings us new life in spite of our doubts and fears. Patient God, you continue to reach out to us with compassion and forgiveness even when we make mistakes. Forgive our anger with systems we cannot manage and despair at misfortune beyond our control. Help us to live in patience with all that is happening in the world around us and beyond us. Help us remember that your love will not let us go. We are grateful. Persistent God, your spirit reminds us of what we can be about. And so we pray for those who are ill and those who are care for them those who are hungry, and those who are without adequate shelter, those who are lonely and feel abandoned. And hear us now as in silence, we continue to pray for other concerns close to our hearts. We pray in the name of Jesus, Christ risen, our hope and Savior, and continue to pray together in his name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us away from temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The closing hymn is number 185 in Voices United. You tell me that the Lord is risen.
Christ, who is known in the breaking of bread, and, and of the Spirit, who surrounds us with life and love, be with us all. Amen. Amen.